here we are jumping right into a little demonstration of something that you can do using PowerPoint to make a collage and then output it at a reasonable size as a single JPEG. Now what I'm doing here, I've already tuned into a website by the Lytro people. They make a very interesting camera that lets you do what I'm doing here on the screen now. You can actually get sort of a 3D picture here. And if you click on one piece of a picture, that comes into focus. If you click on some other piece, that comes into focus. All after the fact. But if you hold the left mouse button down and move things around, everything comes into focus. And they can do this because they've captured a lot more than just one image of the picture. It's called a light field camera. I'm not quite sure the physics of it, but it seems to work very well. Well, here's the Lytro site. And I'm just using this as a as an example of pulling things off the web. I've already seen some very interesting pictures here, some very colorful ones. So I'm just sort of going along like this, showing you how their site works. But the point that I'm going to be demonstrating is something like this. Here is a colorful picture. If I click the left mouse button and hold it down, and move around, you get this 3D sort of a, an effect here because the, your point of perspective is changing just as it would in real life if you're looking at these objects in 3D. But I'm going to pull the cursor off to the side and do a, a shift and print screen. Now I'm going into PowerPoint and I'm going to do a control V to paste that image in. And here's the neat part. If I click on format, and then crop. Right here in PowerPoint, I can crop this picture. The entire picture still is in PowerPoint, but I'm only choosing to present certain pieces of it. So I'm just going to crop this thing in a way. Now when I click elsewhere, the cropping handles come off and I can just make this a different size. And my point here is I'm just going to assemble some very colorful pictures kind of overlapping and at different sizes to make a collage. Let's go back to the Lytro site. By the way, that's another thing you can do here at the Lytro site. If you get into it and double click, then it zooms in on that point. But what I'm interested in doing right now is going to retrieve some additional pictures that had an awful lot of color in them. I happen to have scanned through this earlier. Here's a very nice picture. And when I hold the left mouse button down and move around, I can get the high detail. Shift and print screen again. Back into PowerPoint. Control V. And then once again, format and crop. And I'm going to crop this thing down again to a nice size so that I can continue to build my collage, which I may eventually output and just use as a desktop. Now you might notice I've already set the proportions of this PowerPoint screen over to the 16 by 9 format so that I get a picture that is an image here that much better fits and in fact fits exactly the shape of a modern computer screen. Well, let's finish this up now. We're going to go back up here and pull one or two more pictures from the site that's provided by the Lytro people. Let's take a look at what this one is. That's very nice. And once again, once it finishes loading, I'm going to demonstrate how the Lytro site works. If I click here, this comes into focus and this is no longer in focus. But if I click back here, that comes into focus and the depth of field is here and not here and this becomes blurry. But if I hold the left mouse button down, they extract all the detailed information they can and I get this kind of very detailed picture with a large depth of field. So I'm going to once again do Shift, Print Screen. I'm going to go into PowerPoint, Control-V. I'm going to put these things in here. Format, crop.
crop. And once again, let's just cut this down so I have no black borders on this. And I'll then adjust the proportions, that is, I'll adjust the size, so that I get something that will fit nicely within this. And let's just see, maybe in fact, I'll even just put this here. And I may want to expand it a bit, but I may just pull it down so only part of it is showing because I'd like to have some unevenness and just some not a very regular appearance here to where these things overlap. Maybe I'll even adjust this slightly bigger to emphasize that fact. One more time back to the Lytro site, and I think I'm going to pull this picture. It'll finish loading. And once again, if I click here, that will come into focus and the foreground out of focus. Click here, this comes into focus and the background's out of focus. Or hold the left mouse button down and move around a bit and you get this kind of a 3D effect because the foreground doesn't move as much as the background. So you see this foreground really pop out at you in a very 3D way. But once again, I'm going to do a shift print screen. I'm going to go get into PowerPoint. Control V, and then I'll do the format and the crop so that I can cut this down to eliminate all that excess material from the screen. And I'm almost done with what I'm going to do now in this little demonstration because, actually, aside from demonstrating what the Lytro site does, what I was really very interested in doing was showing you how to do this with PowerPoint acting sort of like a photo editor. Let me just put this right here. And I think I might even crop this further, just like this. And now, if I project this by clicking on the present, what I wind up getting here is the kind of collage that I was looking for. And it could serve as a very nice desktop. So let me just save this. I'm going to save it as. And I'll just put it out here as a picture. And I'll just call this a demo collage from Lytro. So let me save that. That's saved as a PowerPoint. However, if I go here, and this is the magic part, and I save as, but I go here and I select at this point JPEG. Now I'd better go back and put it in the same place, otherwise I'm going to lose track of it. If I do this, and I save, it's going to ask me, do I want the current slide only, or do I want every slide? Well, if I did have multiple slides here and I selected every slide, it would create a folder for me and put the slides in there. But since I only have one slide, I'm just going to say current slide, and so this is going to go out here as Demo Collage Lytro into pictures. But it's going to be Demo Collage Lytro JPEG. And you'll notice the dimensions here are 960 by 540. That's just the default when I've selected a 16 by 19 format. Excuse me, a 16 by 9 format. However, I did discover that there's a registry setting which is a little difficult to make, and I have to find my documentation on that in any way, and that will let you change the size that it outputs in this way. But let me just do this. I'll right mouse click, and I'll select Preview, and you see I have one JPEG now that is the collection of all those very colorful images. Now I'll do something just a little bit different. And what I'm going to do now is open up the PowerPoint file, and I'll present it at the screen size. But now I'm going to do a shift and print screen again to take a picture of the screen. Let me escape. Now I'll get into a photo editor, and you see I do have GIMP on this computer, but I'm kind of fond of this old Paint Shop Pro picture. This old Paint Shop Pro photo editor. 
I'm going to control V and put that entire picture in here. And right now, this one is 366, excuse me, 1366 by 768, which is, in fact, the dimensions of my computer screen. So I'm going to save it this way. I'm going to save it as a JPEG with some decent compression ratio here. And I'll save that. And I'll put it also into pictures just so that I can collect everything in one place. And this I'm going to call my demo collage desktop. So I will do that. And now I'll get out of my photo editor. And you could have done the same thing here with GIMP if you wanted to. Now I have demo collage desktop. And if I preview that, it appears a little bit bigger, but in fact, it is exactly the screen size. So let me just go back here, right mouse click on it, and set as desktop background. If I do that, look what I've got. Now the collage that I've created is my desktop. And of course, you can do this with any pictures, family pictures, pictures of places you've been. You can resize them, arrange a collage. You could have even used the PowerPoint insert text box feature and put labels on here. Or, you know, some sort of a greeting or whatever. Interesting way, you can actually do scrapbooking this way by pulling clip art pictures and include pictures you've taken or scanned in images that you've gotten from magazines or or uh, other sources or news articles anything you like you can use powerpoint to act as a crude photo editor in this way you can even use powerpoint features for doing things like adjusting the brightness and contrast once you explore this you'll see that here in powerpoint and let me open up in fact this, I can highlight any picture, and by going to Format, not only do I get Crop, but I get Contrast. And you see what's happening to the picture there in the in the upper left corner, and Brightness. So those adjustments are the most typical adjustments that people would make using a photo editor. And if I thought that this improved the appearance of this a bit, I could just leave it that way, and when I output this, those changes would appear. Maybe that brightens that up a bit, and let's see what happens here with the brightness. Washes out. This might get to be a bit more vivid. Nope, too much, too much. Let's go back up to here. But maybe the contrast. Oh, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? So I can selectively do anything I want to with any of the pictures in my collage, or I can leave them as they are. And now, of course, I could save this, and I could save as once again as a JPEG. And if I did this, I'd better name it something else, or I'm going to clobber my first one. This is Demo Collage Mitro 2. Let me save that. Current slide. This will create a smaller size, 960 by 540. But if I do this and do Shift Print Screen, and once again go into a photo editor, do a Control V to put it in, and just save it as a JPEG what I'm going to get, and let's just call this desktop 2. Let's get out of here. And if I now go to that point in pictures and desktop 2, if I right mouse click that, By the way, I'm using Windows 8, and it does seem to be very slow when accessing a folder sometimes like that. If I set this as a desktop background, 
Well, you might have noticed a slight change here. I just introduced those contrast and brightness changes. You might, if you compose a desktop this way, leave a portion without an image on the side where you can collect up all of your icons so your icons aren't sort of clobbering your image and becoming a little hard to see for that reason. Anyway, that's just something I'd like to show you, a demonstration from my students at, uh, in my classes at DePaul University on how you could use PowerPoint as an easel to create essentially scrapbook pages that you might even use as desktops. If I had a hobby of scrapbooking, which incidentally I don't, I might consider this a much better way of doing things than using paper and stickers and whatever else you use to compose a physical scrapbook because this way I can share it much easier and in this form I could even send it to my friends as a desktop image and what better way to share things, pictures that you've taken and creations that you've made than making desktops out of them because people will see them just automatically. If they like them, they'll leave them up there. Family pictures, pictures of your kids, really a neat way to work and it's all possible to do for no extra cost as long as you have PowerPoint or something similar, perhaps even the open office version would do the same thing. That's some experimentation I might ask my students to try in the future. Hope you enjoyed it. This is Jim Janesey. Bye-bye.